This is a review of J.P. Morgan's ultra short municipal income ETF, symbol JMST. This is a fairly new ETF. J.P. Morgan released it in October of 2018. Uh, it's a very interesting ETF, kind of a new spin. Most products from J.P. Morgan are fairly new, so let's take a look under the hood, uh, see what's so interesting about it. And uh, this information is from J.P. Morgan, so let's take a look at how they describe it. I'm going to read the bottom one here first, and their goal is to maintain an average weighted maturity of two years or less under most market conditions, and currently they're well into that. The average maturity is at about two-thirds of a year, and uh, so is the duration as a result. This is an exceptionally stable fund. So the middle point references emphasizing comprehensive risk-reward analysis. As I just mentioned, they were reducing risk with a low duration, low maturity. So how are they increasing risk or taking risk? Well, they're doing that by going down the investment grade spectrum and credit quality. And uh, we'll discuss that a little bit more later. They do invest primarily in investment grade fixed variable and floating rate municipal securities. This produces income that should be exempt from federal income taxes. There are always caveats to that, mistakes, possible AMT issues. But in any case, that is the idea. Ultra short, ideally less than two years, currently around two thirds of a year. And uh, taking a little bit more risk down the investment grade credit quality spectrum. So let's look a little further under the hood. So here is a look at the fund's holdings average life. As I mentioned before, it's roughly two-thirds of a year, 0.62 years on duration, 0.66 years <clears throat> on maturity, average life, 0.64 years. Over 90% of the paper, the municipal paper held within the fund, has uh, a life of less than two years. Clearly, a very large percent, less than half of a year. Uh, a small amount over four years, very interesting. Don't know what that's doing in there, but essentially, this is a very short dated fund as it states it would be. So, what exactly is this short dated paper? Let's take a look at the credit quality of the holdings of JMST. As you can see here, very little triple A, a good amount, double A, fair amount, single A, almost no triple B, 4.8%, tier one, huh? And not rated, 8.6% and 13.5%. So you see, mostly investment grade means not all. And in fact, if you add all these together, what you find is that you get an average credit quality, according to Morningstar, of triple B. This compares to, say, the SUB, the iShares short-term muni ETF that has double A average credit, credit quality, as we'll get to a little later. So they're definitely going down the credit spectrum in search of yield. Of course, the, the belief is with such short-term paper, there is limited risk. So let's compare the holdings a little more closely between SUB and JMST. As you can see, uh, JMST is definitely going down in credit quality compared to SUB. SUB has almost 38% in triple A, almost 48% double A. Uh, while JMST has almost no triple A. Um, and SUB is nearly re wholly restricting itself from exiting investment grade, while JMST is much more comfortable stepping over that line, uh, taking roughly a quarter of its holdings outside of investment grade. Um, and many people might argue that 
triple B rated securities right now are inherently suspicious due to market leverage ratios. I'm not going to get into this right here. Let's just look a little deeper at differences between these two funds. So we already discussed uh, the credit quality is significantly different between the two. JMST, much lower quality, sub much higher quality. But the duration risk, much lower for JMST, 0.62 years of duration versus roughly two years on sub. This means even though sub is short term, it does have risk to changes in interest rates, roughly double the change that will occur. Um, and let's look at the difference in yield. Even though JMST has significantly reduced duration, it still produces a yield that's roughly equal to and in fact greater than sub. So this reduction in quality, this substitution of one risk for another, results in basically the same level of income with nearly no interest rate risk. Whether you prefer this risk to the other one is up to you. They both have their places in portfolios. Now, one of the most interesting things about JMST at the moment is that they are subsidizing the yield. This is sort of like a teaser rate of the fund, which normally had or would have a much higher fee, will have a temporarily reduced expense uh, rate because the company, J.P. Morgan, is waiving the rights to some of their fees under their operating agreement. And so uh, this waiver, it sort of creates a teaser rate, much like you might have gotten from a bank if you opened up a new checking or savings account where, say, for the first three to six months, it has a higher interest rate. Some of the funds literature states that the waivers are in effect through the end of October, while other literature states that certain waivers may end in June. There is also the potential that these fee waivers will be extended, as it is a pretty good marketing ploy uh, with the waivers, the uh, essentially 0.2% increase in income to the holder makes JMST highly competitive, arguably equal or superior to sub in near term without that subsidy. I don't think the credit quality makes it uh, a, a reasonable analog, but it is a reasonable facsimile and perhaps even superior with the subsidy. I don't know exactly. I wish there was a little more history on the fund, so we might have to revisit it in the fall. Okay, but let's take a look at actual performance so far to see exactly how JMST has performed through the last six months, uh, through some interesting moves in the markets, both fixed income and equities. So if you look at this chart, you can see that towards the end of 2018, as the Federal Reserve indicated that rate increases were going to come to an end, at least in the near term, that JMST appreciated, as did most fixed income instruments. But uh, it only appreciated by about a half a percent. This is because of that low duration. Uh, JMST has very low sensitivity to interest rate risk in either direction. So you didn't really capture much appreciation, nor did it really appreciate much along with junk bonds and other uh, lower investment grade securities, which did do very well so far in 2019. But what did happen to JMST is that it entered what is clearly a very tight trading range. If you look here, you can see JMST is basically bouncing between about $50.30 and $50.40. And uh, the big difference being how close it is to going ex-dividend. So uh, basically all of 2019 is spent in this very tight range, which makes JMST very much like a money market account. It does have a little bit of variation, but it is exceptionally stable. The big caveat to that stability, of course, is that uh, credit quality has not been an issue over the last six months, and we can't really gauge 
how this portfolio would do in a period where high quality fixed income does well, but lower quality junk and triple B rated fixed income instruments do poorly. The theory behind this fund is that the extremely low duration will substantially mitigate the risk that could come from the credit quality of this portfolio. Uh, there's a strong possibility that it will be correct, but it would be nice to get some data on exactly how it performs, especially since there is an active management component to this fund. Now take a look at this again. If you look at what I used as my initial slide, you can see that this fund was renamed. It's only about six months old and it was already renamed. They added the word income to the ETF. That is what the renaming was. This is also partially what uh, leads me to believe that the uh, teaser rate, the subsidization and waivers may be extended longer than initially stated. JP Morgan has already made some slight changes to this fund uh, in name alone, but clearly that's a marketing issue. So other marketing concepts may get tweaked. And I think nothing is more important than this fee. So I am hopeful that the fee will uh, undergo some sort of change between now and November. So that brings me to the end of this little presentation on JMST, the Ultra Short Term Municipal Income ETF from JP Morgan. Uh, it's a pretty interesting fund, I think, with the current subsidies on the fees. It is a very competitive, very compelling fund to substitute uh, a cash position, money market position, or supplement the short-term component of a fixed income fund that's looking to reduce its duration and accompanying interest rate sensitivity. Okay, that's the conclusion of this little presentation on JMST. If you have any questions or comments or think that there's another new or existing ETF that should be uh, compared or considered, please leave your comments below. Thank you for your time and viewing.